Hello there, everyone. This is Dr. Gwen from the Dr. Gwen International Training and Empowerment Academy and host of the Dr. Gwen podcast show on iTunes. Good afternoon to you, my friends, on this crisp Maryland afternoon. And I am trusting that you are having so far a great day. And if you saw my post this morning on my page, that post is an encouragement for you to fashion your thoughts about how you think about how you can do something, whether or not something is impeding you or helping you to progress, or whether or not you feel like you are progressing or you're able to progress on a certain front. It is your thoughts that make a great difference in your ability to fashion success or failure. And this afternoon we're talking about the mask. And that of course doesn't seem like it is a pleasant conversation. But then again, after we talk about this, you will begin to see that it absolutely is. And one of the reasons, as you know, why I come here every day is to help us to reflect on our lives and how we're living it so we can experience the most positive and most beautiful experiences even in the midst of our struggles or challenges or pain or whatever comes our way. Because life doesn't have to be disastrous And it doesn't have to feel as though it's the end of the world when we are confronted with the different challenges. And as humans, we have a way that we deal with our challenges. And a lot of times, what we do is we put on a mask. But I want to ask you here this afternoon, is your mask benefiting you? Does the mask that you wear have a positive impact on you and on the people in your lives. I want to turn to a terminology that I learned a long time ago, and I believe this was coined by the psychologist Sigmund Freud, and it's called defense mechanisms. And defense mechanisms, I learned, are tools or behaviors or actions or thoughts that we take on in our lives to protect us. And a lot of times we put those defense mechanisms on and we put them on when we were kids. As little kids, those defense mechanisms, they help protect us from harm or dangers or perceptions. The thing about it is, though, as we grow up and we become adults, we tend not to shed some of those. And one article I confronted quite recently suggested that there are good defense mechanisms. They consider the word assertive, assertiveness to be a defense mechanism. Now, don't ask me how that definition came about. I'm not necessarily expressing that as my belief. The point that I am working towards expressing is simply that a defense mechanism may not be all negative. And I coin a mask to be a defense mechanism. So as we talk about this today, I want you to search your life to see what is the mask that you may be wearing today. I had a mask and my mask was intended to protect me from from some people. I felt very uncomfortable for a good long time when anybody approached me too rapidly in a too friendly, jovial way, especially guys. And sometimes they would have a way to put their hands on you or make some comments that really made me feel uncomfortable. And because I didn't want to offend anyone, and I didn't want to upset anyone and make them feel less than, I put that mask up to kind of ward off 
them until they learned who I was. And that was my protection so that I could feel comfortable. And what that did was it, in, it inhibited me. It prevented me from being really me up front. Of course, as they knew me and I knew them, whoever they were, what happened was that then my real self became real and visible. But also, though, that mask kept a lot of people out, like not approaching me initially. And while it made me feel safe back here, it didn't allow other people to feel safe in my presence so that they could be their free selves and relate. Now, I was not aware 100% that that mask was on until I did some deep reflecting and some deep soul searching. And then I discovered what it was. And it flashed back to me when I was in high school. I had an English teacher, Mrs. Crop, who came. She was a visiting teacher. And at the end of the year, she was an excellent educator, very warm and wonderful. And that side note has nothing to do with what I'm saying. <laughs> but Mrs. Croft came and she, at the end of the year, wrote a summary on all of us who were kids in her class. And I clearly remembered her summary of me and who Mrs. Croft de described me to be was this rose and she said you she wrote you are this rose that grows bud she said that's closed and that gradually opens to the warmth of the sun now back then do you think i had a clue what she was talking about not a single clue i wasn't even aware and it was only decades later after i had done my own self-searching and deep searching that I realized that Mrs. Crop knew me even before I recognized who I was. I discovered that this is what I was doing, like a closed rosebud. And rosebud because the essence is so wonderful and the essence is so beautiful. And yet it's closed so everyone cannot enjoy the radiance and the beauty of me as with when I'm open. And I remembered having a conversation with a few other people about that. When they met me up front, it was like that distant, that wall. By this time, I was thinking it was gone. However, it probably was two years ago that I had a conversation with someone else about this. And during the conversation, she said to me, you know, you are so much different now than when I first met you. And I said, really? I said, huh, I don't know what that is. And then I flashed back and recognized that I actually was not opening up the whole entire way at the start of it. And so we had that conversation of who I was because who she saw then at the end was really who I was. But I had that need to have that mask. Now, why did I share all of this story with you? What kind of mask are you wearing today? Do you have one on? Are you putting on a mask that may be keeping others away from you. It may cause you to feel safe, but in the process, what does it do for others? And if it keeps others away from you, then really in essence, it's also keeping blessings away from you. Now there are certain masks that we know of that I'm going to just say a few. There are as many as 15 or more defense mechanisms, I'll call them. I, I won't say mask. Even though 
that's really what they are. One of the one of those masks is denial. That sometimes the situation may be so painful, the circumstance may not be so right, and that we end up being in denial. And how do we show the denial? We act the complete opposite of what is actually going on with us. That denial is what keeps us acting differently from who we really are. And that can be not so good because inside of that denial can come pretense, pretense of who we are not. One of the worst type of pretense, I don't know if there's any better or any worse really, but one of the ones that really get to me is people pretending to be something that they are not. You know, and who am I to judge, right? Because I had my own going on there. Yeah, I had my own distance that I was keeping people away from. I don't want to be anything different than who I really am. I don't want to project that I am this way when life is actually this way. I don't want to project that I have this when I really don't. I think there are levels of projection in people's lives that can help them to look forward to whatever it is that they are creating in their minds. And there is a difference because everything that you want first starts in your mind and with your language. So it's really important that when you are creating what you want, that your language, hey there, Jackie, my friend, how are you? Just love you, girl. So it's really important that the, the language that you are projecting is really positive, that is going to be driving other people to you, and that will drive whatever you want towards you. So you're not gonna say, well, you know, I am, and you're doing something negative, you're going to speak in, into existence that positive thing that you really want. And by speaking it, it's completely different than denial and pretending that you have it. Because when you get, when you get up and you say, oh man, you know, I am so grateful for all of this wonderful um, million dollars that I have saved up in my bank account, that can be a denial of the reality and it can be your projection language. I think the projection language is something that needs to be done on your own, in your own conversations with yourself. Not that you're going to go out there and be, oh, poor me, I don't have and I don't have. No, none of that stuff. Nobody wants to be around anybody who's like that, who's always a downer. However, though, we have to make sure that the masks are not things that are inhibiting us and inhibiting others around us. So that denial and not being real about the circumstance is really not a good one. Then the projection. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Jackie. <laughs> yeah, so the projection as well. You know what? Sometimes when we have an issue in our lives, you know what we do? We put it on other people. <laughs> we have a way to do that. We go, we say, you know, if I have a shortfall, for example, and I am aware of it and somebody brings it to my attention, what I do is I stick it on to my husband or I stick it on to my friend or I stick it on to my coworker or I stick it on to my boss and project it over there all the time in denial, not knowing that I have that particular issue. That is a mask. And that mask is not serving me. Because if I don't come to 
grips and deal with that, then it's going to continuously inhibit me in my personal growth and inhibit my relation with other people. And that's a whole rationalization is another defense mechanism. Well, we rationalize stuff away and we make the meaning of something different than what, what it really is. So my friends, I want you to, from my story that I shared earlier and from this conversation, what I want you to do is to take a look and to really examine to see whether or not you have a mask on. And it's not a sin and it's not wrong and it's not a crime for you to have a mask on. But what that mask does is it inhibits you. It, it takes away from your own greatness. It takes away from your own connectedness with others. And it really robs you of some eternal joys that you could be experiencing had you expressed yourself the fullest and the best way that you really are. And really in reality, when we are not really ourselves, what that does is it doesn't allow other people to feel free to be themselves around us either. So think about that. And if you're wearing a mask, I invite you to join me to take it off and throw it away and just let the bare self show up. Just show up really, truly the way you are, because that is the way, my friend, that your true essence will be felt. Like my teacher told me that I'm this rosebud, you can smell the roses much more beautifully when it is open than when it's closed. So get rid of the mask, open yourself, be beautiful, be lovely. Jackie, I love you as always. And Jackie says, yes, I've been working on me being my true self. That is so wonderful. And you know, that's what we all do. Just being our true divine selves, the way we were in intended to be as a piece of the divine made in the image and in the likeness of. So my friends, this afternoon, I just love you. I want you to have the most amazing, amazing day. And think on these things. And I'll see you back here tomorrow at the same time. This is Dr. Gwen, empowering lives to live purposefully and passionately. Love you guys.